Somebody recently asked me if boxing changed my life and I, I stopped them and I said, no, boxing didn't change my life, it saved my life. Uh, my name is Damon Guerrero. Uh, my relationship is a past fighter for Mr. Garcia when I was a teenager. I came across Second Chance Gym or Mr. Garcia's Gym back in the day whenever I was boxing. I started boxing when I was eight years old. I fought for a guy out of Frisco named Cookie Ortega. And Cookie Ortega unfortunately got murdered. And after he got murdered, I took a little bit of time off. And I think when I was about 13, 14 years old, I found that Mr. Garcia was coaching out of the Boys and Girls Club in McKinney. Man, my involvement in uh, Second Chance Gym is pretty much since I was born, you know, in diapers. All the way up till now, pretty much. Uh, I was pretty much born and raised in a gym. I always told everybody uh, <laughs> this was actually our, our first home. Our home home was our second home. See, back in the late 90s and, and early 90s, you know, we were the gym. But then at that time, we were incorporated with the Boys and Girls Club. They had major sponsors, you know. They always had that revenue coming in, coming in. It wasn't until they decided to change and get rid of the boxing program. What? So what happened? Boom, we got kicked to the curb. So now we're like, oh, what are we going to do now? What are we going to do now? Because we still had a following. It wasn't up until now where I actually started understanding what he was trying to do for the community and for people in general, you know, young adults and troubled teens and the at-risk uh, youth. I came across Second Chance Gym as I wanted to change my life and I had, you know, recently wrote down, you know, my goals in life because I never had any. I was determined to find a gym that day and I was just riding around trying to find the first gym I seen and I happened to come across this little gym and it was a little, you know, kind of tucked away and I was like, I'm just gonna go in here and see, see what happens and come to find out that we happened to be family and I was like, wow, well, where, where, you know? I don't know how it happened. I would just say it was like a blessing from God or like something from God because um, I was looking and I was determined to change my life and I happened to find a gym. The first gym, like I said, had it been a different gym, I was going to sign up with that gym probably. As I got older, I had much respect for my, my father. You know, I, I now realize, you know, I got some you know, some big shoes to fill, you know, and he's got a big heart. In a sense, you know, uh, I look up to him for that. You know, it just, you know, makes him love him even more, you know, and shows what kind of person he is. And so I strive every day to kind of, you know, be that person, you know, not only to, uh, you know, to my kids, anyone who walks in the gym, hey, you always have a home. Our doors are always open. More of the reason why we named the gym a long time ago was Second Chance Gym. I can't tell you how many boxers have came through and they've started off with us and then end up leaving, going to another gym. A few months later, they're back at you know at a, our doorstep there knocking like, oh well, coach, you know uh, I would try to go to another gym. I just didn't like it. And just, hey, you know what? You know you're always welcome here. I'll give you a second chance. You know. Come on, you know the routine, grab the rope, you know, let's go. <laughs> Class is about to start. Bob and Weave, you just take any score points. Are you ready? Are you ready? You two minute round. You jab on your technique. I've been doing this for the past 39 years in McKinney. And I've been here in McKinney 59 years. Living in McKinney. I've been working with youth, with McKinney Boys and Girls Club, with McKinney ISD, 
It's just kids from the neighborhood. So I've been doing this. That's my life. Three, two, I'm going to put four, four, two, two, right. Let's go. Let's go. I'm here to encourage them, to work with them, to, to get to that goal that they said. And most of the, the ones that I deal with, they're from single parent, you know, like a, mo a mother at the house or a father. So some of the, the ones that I deal with need that encouragement, need that motivation, need that little extra push and, and little discipline behind them in, in their life. Ready, Lenny? You going first? Or are we all going? Go together. Quick, 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 you always have to depend on somebody. So, you know, joining boxing, you know, believing in myself and coach believing me and the team believing in me, uh, you know, I'm not depending on no, I'm like, I'm depending on them, but now it's like, hey, they're depending on me. Now I have to be the man. And like I said, I really don't have family and the family I do have, you know, we barely talk anyway. So everybody at the gym is kind of like family because now they support me, you know, when I didn't have the family to support me. Y'all do jumping coach. jacks. I do. Yeah. I do. Yeah. Lena's gonna beat me, coach. Lena's gonna beat me. I don't know what ducks do when they go down like this, but they like get some type Why of they manure. Get like that? That's the way, you ain't never seen a duck. Like? That's what ducks do. They like the break their necks. Yeah. <laughs> what is that? You know, it helps me relieve anger or, you know, like just makes me, even if I fail, you know, it makes me feel I'm doing something, or at least I'm trying to, you know, go after something instead of being nothing. Real fast. Fast, fast, slow. Job. You ready? Say when to go. Go. It's scary to have to like know one thing all your life and now, you know, now I'm taking risk and now I'm trying to push and be successful. Like it's scary and but it's a good scary. Yeah. <laughs> Luis does seven, he does ten. Really? No, I did eight. Luis did seven. Ooh, what did Luis get? Seven, seven, seven thirty, 30. seven fifty, seven twenty. Eight fifteen. Eight fifteen. Look how look how skinny Luis is. I'm on him. Big man's on him. Yeah, but you got stronger legs. Than Big him. man's on him. Little stick legs. Yeah, he got like little uh, what's some thing? Trudeau stick legs. <laughs> you know them things that like Domino's or Pizza Hut? Them little cinnamon sticks. That's the kind of legs he got. My name is Luisa Costa, and I'm one of the fighters that second chance him. I first found out about it when I was around like 10 years old. My mom took me, and she wanted to sign me up for it, but I was young, and I didn't want to do it. But then when I got to middle school, I started thinking about it even more, and I decided to go back. And as soon as I walked in there, it just seemed like a friendly environment. And from there, I've just been with Coach Garcia. Yeah. <laughs> it keeps me out of trouble a lot. Most of the time, I'm here at the gym trying to get better at what I do and it gives me like the discipline here at school and at my house, everywhere.
Coach, what do we tell him? We tell him to, you know, do the one-two. You know, he did the one-two. He the one-two. He did the one-two. Or it's his hand. One, two, pop, pop, next. Block the face, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, pop, 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 block, punch. Well, a lot of people don't really do this, and I like that because I, I like to be different, especially here, like in McKinney. There's really not a lot of boxers here. First, I started just, just as a beginner. I didn't know anything about boxing. And the more and more I came every day, the more coach taught me. And right now I've been having some fights and I've been getting better ever since. And well, if I stick to the amateurs, I hope to make the Olympic team. Or if not, I'll just go pro.
Elizabeth Compradía, mamá de Luisa Costa. Bueno, su papá de ellos, este, él estaba aquí en Estados Unidos. Cuando él llegó allá como a los tres meses, él decidió ir a una fiesta. En esa fiesta hubo un, una pelea. Entonces en esa pelea llegó otra persona y les disparó a él y a su primo. Desafortunadamente el papá falleció, ¿verdad? Pero... Well, people tell me that he used to like fight a lot. He would just be like, I guess, short-tempered, and he would fight a lot in the street. And people would always tell me that he was good, like he never got like beat up or nothing. And I guess that's where I got the boxing from, from him. From that, a lot of things changed. And my mom, when that happened, my mom decided to immigrate over here to the United States. And at the time, she only had enough money to like bring herself over here. And when she got here, she started working to try to raise money to get me and my sister over here to get us a better future. No, pues sí, sí, sí tenía dificultades en ese aspecto porque no tenía ningún apoyo de, de nadie, ni yo sola tenía que, que ver por, el, por, por la vida de ellos. Entonces, este, yo sí tenía muchas dificultades porque cuando llegué aquí, supuesta hasta, de hecho, yo a ir al trabajo, yo caminaba una hora para poder llegar a mi trabajo. Este, y, y las dificultades que tenía con ellos era como que tenía que trabajar, tenía que pagar porque los cuidaban, pero después de que llegué aquí a Estados Unidos encontré una buena persona que me ayudó con ellos. Uh, she met my stepdad and uh, that was really a blessing from God to our family because he's really like helped us a lot and he was actually the one that paid for me and my sister to get here. Mi nombre es Juan Gómez. Este, yo soy de El Salvador, este, ya tengo aquí 18 años en Estados Unidos, este, trabajando fuerte como a eso venimos y aquí estamos apoyando a mi familia. Pues a ella la conocí en el trabajo, comprando bien las hamburguesas muy ricas, por de hecho. Ahí la conocí y pues le gusté, yo pienso, y ya estamos juntos hasta, hasta este día. It, when we got here, it was it wasn't like everything wasn't good. Like we were still struggling. There was nights whenever like they would only have enough for me and my sister to eat and stuff. Like they would lie to us and tell us that they weren't hungry. When but in reality, they only had enough for me and my sister. 
And then after a while, you know, things got better. Not that long ago, I actually became a resident of the United States, so I know that that was him watching over me and my sister. They gave me that opportunity because I had lost my dad. And yeah, it actually motivates me because I know that he's by my side. Well, I espero que este deporte del boxeo ayude a él a, a, sal, a permanecer en él para que él no caiga en tentaciones de andar como, como le volví a dije hace rato en drogas y pienso que él va a ser una, una persona grande porque a él le gusta ese deporte del boxeo. A mí, a mí me motiva a seguirlo apoyando a él para que él pueda superarse y, y la motivación que yo tengo con él es porque él él pone esfuerzo en el, en el deporte porque si no pone el esfuerzo no tiene caso que yo ponga mi desempeño en él cuando él no, no pone en práctica lo que él está haciendo yo des, este cuando él falleció pues yo me quedé totalmente nomás con ellos dos pero todo estuvo bien este pues <risa> Everything I have around me in life, like it all motivates my friends, motivate me, you know, the passion of my dad, my coach, my family, you know, everyone. I gotta finish my opponent today, and then if I don't finish it, you know, I don't go to championship rounds. But we're here to support the kids. There's a lot of good fights. We're trying to get our names on Coach Garcia's plaques for 2020 Golden Gloves champion. My boy Luis gonna bring it home today. Hopefully, me and Pino gonna bring it home on Friday. And um, we're gonna put McKinney on the map.
Sellers Park right here. Hey, gotta get the MC in there though. It's, it's all rusted and busted, but you know, this is what we do. This park right here, I grew up here basically all my life. I used to stay right here in the back with my grandpa. He's the man who, you know, besides God, he's the man who made me who I am today. You know, just as being kids, crowd egg fishing, playing basketball, football, riding four wheelers. And I also had to sleep out here on this park at one point in time. <laughs> it was at one point in my time where I was at the lowest part of my life. I was like 15, 16 years old and you would never think, oh, I never thought, you know, I would be like this. You know, it's all still here. Luckily, they opened up the rec center, you know, back in the day. They added on another part. That was where I was able to just take a shower when I was sleeping on the streets. I was at the point to where I was like, you know, 15, 16 years old, out of school and everything. and. Uh, had no guidance, I'm my own person. I was like, man, this can't be my life. I'm sleeping on the streets, I'm taking showers over here. Like, come on now, I didn't think this ever would happen. And um, I wanted to kill myself. I had a gun, I wanted to kill myself. Uh, right back there, really, at my homeboy's house. And um, I was like, I was thinking about, you know, my mom hasn't been there, but she's been there as much as she could. Uh, Dad never knew him, I mean, it was just me and my brother and you know, really my mom now, and uh, but she's been in and out of prison too. But I was like, what if I kill myself and then my brother goes and does something stupid? Or my mom, you know, has a, a breakdown and she ends up back in prison. I was like, man, I can't kill myself. And so then from that day on, I changed my life. That's why I believe everything happens for a reason because had I not came to my lowest point in my life, I probably would have never came close or been able, you know what I'm saying, to come in touch with God. This is where we used to catch the crowd eggs. We go in there. We always try to see where that tunnel go to, but we always get scared. Before those trees was there, and all that little area right there, there'd be no house, no nothing. You see the good old little skyline of McKinney, my favorite. Number one place in the lift, just in case y'all don't know. So had I known about Second Chance Gym when I was younger, I probably, you know, I would have been a superstar by now, probably. <laughs> it made me do things, you know. I never thought I'd do. I'm out here taking out these big people. <laughs> I'm out here taking out these big people. 178. I'm supposed to be 150. I used to love coming to cafeteria right here. This right here, man. We always try to leave early through these doors. I always try to leave early. I'm trying to get. I'm trying to go home. Enough. I had enough of school. But this cafeteria had the nicest little lunch ladies. Friday. What was it called? Friday sales day. I don't know what it was called. But it was, uh, it was something good. They always had the best cookies and cream, ice cream. Little lunch ladies come over to my ketchup package. Um, we had a food fight in here one day. We all got in trouble. That was a bad idea. People depend on me finally on something, even though I, I don't have nothing. But, you know, I got these fists and a big heart. And, um, you know, God's hands upon me. I plan to do big things. Talk, 
Top with the punches, top with the punches. From their very beginning, it was the, the discipline side of it, um, the professionalism. 
the respect that we uh, learned for each other, for the coach, for the gym, for other fighters, for the community. We were always involved in stuff within the community and I think that carry over to what I do now as a police officer. It's very important for me to treat people uh, the way I want to be treated and I think we learned that through the discipline, through boxing and growing up in, the, in this environment. It, de it definitely had a, a positive effect on me growing up. But of course, in there, I, I guess I was, you know, the black sheep of the family, you know. The roads I was choosing, the choices I was making as an adolescent, you know, they weren't the best. Not only that, I wasn't the, like, the skinniest kid and whatnot, you know. I was, I was a little hefty back then. But you know, I, I got picked on, I got bullied, and some of that frustration uh, I was able to take out here at the gym as well. I just wish that, you know, I would have stuck with it, having someone tell me and kind of guide me in the right direction. I remember writing a paper when I was in high school. The title was On the Other Side of the Tracks. In every town, you have your ghetto, low-income side of the town, and then you have your high-end side of the town. On that side of the tracks, everything's all sunshine and rainbows, and it's a perfect world. But when you start coming on this side of the tracks, that's when, like I said, it gets real. You start meeting real people that got real struggles that are still just trying to maintain. Yes, it gets a bad rep because you got some guys that make about that life choice and they want to live that life. But then, man, you got some guys that are just trying to get up out of there that just need a chance. Everybody has a sad story, okay? I get it. You got two options. You're just gonna walk around and cry about it, or you're gonna do something about it. You're gonna change. Got you, man.
takes in here, the dedication, the hard work, the training. There's always someone out there training just as hard as you or even harder. Look guys, you want to be champion. This is no Oh, I'm gonna come out two days a week, you know, type of thing. No, you gotta be on it. You gotta train so that you're at your top peak performance. Because I know what it takes. I've been in there. You know, the gym's very, been very important to me. If it wasn't for Mr. Garcia and several people that were put in my life to kind of be mentors and be good examples for me, be good role models, that I wouldn't be where I was at today. So I'm very grateful for him. And, you know, when we were growing up, we, nobody ever asked for a dime to help pay for this, help pay for that. It was something that we all did together as a group, or he found a way, he found a sponsor to help us get to a tournament or help us pay for uniforms or pay for entry fees. And uh, I really hope that you know he can continue to do what he does because he's made a big impact in my life and I know he'll continue to do that for others. I remember we were in school, we bring your parent to school. What, oh, my dad's a firefighter, my dad's a, a mailman, my dad's a boxing coach. Really, well, what is that? Well, boxing coach you know I mean that's all he's ever done is box he's never had no he wasn't no dog catcher he wasn't no meter reader he wasn't no teacher you know whatever he's just boxing coach that's it. that's all he's ever done that's all I've known well we just need a lot more people to want to do this to join the gym because we, we struggle with rent and the more people we get that actually want to do this that problem would go away you know, running the gym is not easy, you know. You have to have that constant clientele coming in. It was hard. It was. Because now you're making these life decisions. Well, am I going to keep the light on at my house? Or are we going to keep the light on at the gym? Because of your love for the, the sport and your love for what you do. The only thing I'm asking for is the help from the community. You know. I've been around McKinney for so many years, and and I've helped a lot of them. Now I think I think what I'm looking for the community to help us out now. Now that we're in a little financial bind, just to keep the doors open for everybody. You know, I have a big family myself. I have five kids, a beautiful wife, and uh, you know, my my family is always going to come first. But in a sense, the gym is my family as well. And that's what I said. We're like a big family here. You know, we all respect each other, try to have a good time, and at the same, th same time, learn, learn a skill of self-defense. And teach them to, to help others. You know, what goes around comes around. <laughs>